Hey, this is part four of a brief series on eigenvalue inequalities. And this one deals with a pretty fascinating theorem, one of the early ones. It's Ger uh, Gershgorian Circle Theorem. And um, the, briefly, the theorem says every eigenvalue of a matrix lies within at least one Gershgorian disk. Okay, and it turns out that this is so easy to calculate, you can do it by hand, just about for any matrix, uh, complex or real. And but first, let me define what a Gregorian or Gershgorian disk is. So if we have any matrix m uh, m by m, and the elements will be denoted by a i j, and then what this says that this is for row i. We're going to sum all the elements in row I except for the diagonal element. And we're going to sum the absolute value. And that sum is going to be the, uh, the row total for I. And then the Gershgorian disk is going to be this. It's a, it's a circle or a disk centered at the the diagonal element of row i and it has a radius of this right here the gir so this disk it's a circle and uh, that's called a uh, Gershgorian disk and uh, each m by m matrix has m of these Gershgorian disks and so the union of all these disks will contain all of the eigenvalues. Okay, and the proof is also straightforward and simple. If uh, we have A as an M by M matrix, uh, the eigenvalues, not necessarily ordered, just the eigenvalues, but, but the associated eigenvectors. And each eigenvector we're going to denote like this. For example, the ith eigenvector will be little xij. And then the j, of course, goes from 1 to m. And then the, because they're eigenvalue vectors, they satisfy this relationship, which then in matrix form is this. So over here, you know, you take the first row times this column vector which is this the second row then you get this the nth row you get this this side is just lambda 1 times the first element lambda 1 times the second element lambda 1 times the nth element okay so now um, if let's take this uh, statement here says hey you know not looking at the lambda one but looking at the uh, x sub one one of those there's a largest element somewhere in here okay we don't know where it is but somewhere there is and we're going to call that the k one element okay and the k is you know some k and the subscript one means we're dealing with the first eigenvector Okay, so we're going to look at the maximum of all these and we're going to call it uh, x sub 1k, you know, sub 1. So let's assume it's in the kth row. And the subscript means we're dealing with the first eigenvector. So within the kth row, we get this. So that's k sub 1. So we take the, the kth row times the eigenvector, and that's equal to just the lambda 1 times that element. Now, if we take the main diagonal of this one, which is when j equals k, take it out of this sum and then move it to the other side. That's what this is. So we're, it's the, the kth row times the eigenvector but the k the the jj element or the kk element i mean is taken out and moved to this side so the akk and again those are subscripts 
we get this. Now let's look at this piece here, which is this. We take the absolute value of it, and we know that's equal to the absolute value of this sum. We, that's by definition. And then that's less than or equal to that this sum of these absolute values. Now, this is over um, all um, all x's except for the the k kth one because and it's the largest. So if we put in uh, the kth element here in a po you know as opposed to someone over the others, then this is less than that because this was the maximum. Well, this is no longer indexed by this sum, so we can take it out. But this piece here is is R. So it's the kth row sum minus the, the kth diagonal times the, the whatever this number is. Okay? Well, if we divide by this number here and divide by here, we get this relationship. And that says the first lambda parameter is in one of the uh, Gregorian disks, the kk row of it. Well, that is just for the first eigenvalue, an eigenvector. And then we can do, similarly, we can do this for the second eigenvalue, that we can form this relationship that for some k, k2, remember this is whatever, wherever the largest element is in the second eigenvector. This relationship holds. So this says that lambda 2 is in one of those Gregorian disks. Okay, well this is true for all lambda i. So all the lambdas, so if we take the Gregorian disk of each row and then take the union, though, then all the lambdas or all the eigenvalues are within that, uh, the, the Gregorian dish, and the theorem is proved. So let's do a quick example. So let's set up this correlation matrix and uh, putting it in uh, a, a program to solve, we get these as the lambda values, 0.36 something, 1.6, and 1. Now the row sum is the sum of all the elements, not the diagonal. So this is 0.6. Row 2 is going to be 0.8. Row 3 is 0.2. So the Gregorian dish, the first one, is going to be um, 1 minus 0.6, 1 plus 0.6. The second disk will we'll get 0.2 and 1.8, and the third will get 0.8 and 1.2. So if we take the union of these, we get 0.2 to 1.8, which contains all of the eigenvalues in this example. Okay. Well, that's all I have for the Gershgorian disk for this talk. Uh, the next one will... Um, will be an interesting talk on the Brower's ovals of Cassini, which is pretty, also pretty fascinating. Uh, so I hope you liked it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.